Hey guys, Spud here, and today we're going over the basics of using your Cyrano 4 radar in your new Mirage F1CE. The controls you'll find in the cockpit, the keybinds you'll need to have set on your HOTAS, as well as a demonstration on how to use your Cyrano 4 in conjunction with your Matra R530F radar guided missiles and your A9 Sidewinder or Magic 1 wingtip mounted Fox 2s. Again, huge thanks to Vibora from Argus for allowing me to share this very cool module with you guys. I've been waiting for the Mirage F1 for a long, long time now, and my hype is absolutely through the roof. So let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty guys, I am super excited to have you guys back in the office of the Mirage F1 CE. Like we said in the intro to this video, we're going to be going over the very basic controls of your Cyrano 4 radar. Then we'll hop right into a demonstration of using that radar to engage aerial targets with our Matra 530F radar guided missiles, as well as our wingtip mounted sidewinders or magic ones. I'm going to be doing my absolute best to be able to translate the French terminology used for the radar controls in this aircraft into the more Americanized terminology that you guys are very, very familiar with when using the radar of your FA-18, F-16, F-14, F-5, and so on. First thing you'll notice right off the bat is the radar controls for the Mirage F-1 are kind of spread out all over the cockpit. The first place you'll find radar controls is going to be the power and armament panel, which is right by your right knee as you sit in the ejection seat. It is furthest out here towards the wall of your cockpit. The most important switch being your power switch or radar selector switch as it's labeled in this aircraft to move the power from off to standby to emit, which actually starts the radar emitting and scanning out into the airspace around you. We can see we're getting a couple faint radar contacts out there. We've definitely got some enemy targets out there for us to shoot at today. Just after that switch is the line control switch, radar four lines, one line scan switch as it's labeled in the keybinds and on the tool tips of the cockpit here. This changes from a four bar to a one bar scan, increasing or decreasing the scan volume of your radar. Moving on from this panel, we then have the actual bezel around our radar scope. This gives us a ton of information about what is happening with the radar. From our display scale from 60 nautical miles, 35, 15, and 7, to the actual radar modes that we have available to us. We also have our elevation display showing us whether our radar is tilted up or down in degrees. Using the radar elevation controls, we can tilt the radar up and we can tilt it down. With the very basic Cyrano 4 radar in the Mirage F1, I recommend just keeping it at zero for the most part. Down below, we have a few test functions, luminosity, brightness, and other functions such as memory controls, as well as we have the radar mode selector. HA mode up here, denoted that we're currently in HA mode by the illuminated light, is your basic RWS scan mode. You can be very, very familiar with this with any radar that you use in DCS. Changing that to BZ mode is a mode of the radar that is coming very, very soon after release. And this is essentially a boresight dogfight mode. Moving it again to V1 is going to be a very basic ground mapping mode. It does work quite well for mapping the ground below you. We're currently deep over the Persian Gulf at the moment, and that's why we're not scanning anything on the ground. It will once in a while, as you see here, pick up an airborne target as well, especially if it's below you, which is kind of interesting and could potentially be useful to someone who figures out a cheeky way to use this. Let's go ahead and move her back to HA mode. The other modes will be coming soon after early access. Moving on, to the other control panel for the radar is going to be our radar control stick, which lives after the throttle here. The designers at Dassault, instead of having a full-on hands-on throttle and stick, had a separate stick for controlling the radar. This slider that is located aft of the radar control stick is used for controlling the scaling of your radar display. 
and you can see the illuminated light changes to the different display settings that you have selected. Forward is another slider that changes the azimuth scan between 30 and 60 degrees for your Cyrano radar scanning back and forth. On your radar control stick, you have a number of additional functions that allow you to manipulate the radar, such as the radar range and azimuth control, which is essentially your throttle designator controller, which allows you to move the radar cursor, which in French aircraft is called the strobe. This is essentially just like your captain's bars or your radar cursor in the FA-18 or F-16 or F-5 or any other Western aircraft. However, because it's only a single vertical line, I guess we can call it the Lieutenant's Bars in the Mirage 2000. Essentially, just like the Captain's Bars in your F5, FA-18, F-15, etc., you put this over the top of your radar contact, you press and hold the lock button until the radar locks it up. Let's go ahead and open up our controls, our adjust control section of our options and take a look at what's going on there. Getting a little slow, the autopilot's not liking that. Let's push up the throttle here. All right. We'll hit escape. We'll hit adjust controls. And the main section where you're gonna find a lot of these radar controls is going to be your radar control stick panel. A few things you're definitely gonna to wanna to have map is gonna be your ASAPC lever lock on. This is how you actually lock a target in BVR mode using your HA slash search mode of your radar. TWS, which puts the radar into a basic TWS mode. Control stick decrease elevation button and increase elevation button for manipulating the elevation of your radar to scan the radar up or down from the water line of your aircraft. The gain control allows you to change how sensitive the radar is to um, the ground and terrain in ground mapping mode. The stick scale selection left and right and stick scan selection left and right are the keybind versions of those two sliders that we clicked on earlier. These two keybinds are not quite fully fleshed out by the devs and they go from the furthest left to the furthest right position and it works really really well for this uh, scan selection but for the scale selection you're going to have to use your mouse as of the early access release to actually set the actual scale you really want otherwise you'd just be banging back and forth between 7 nautical miles and 60 nautical miles which might not be the best, worst thing in the world for getting something changed very very quickly we also have our control unlocking. So this is going to unlock any radar target that we have currently selected or locked onto. Beyond the radar control stick, there are some additional buttons and switches we should have mapped on our HOTAS for flying the F1CE in DCS. These buttons and switches mapped on your HOTAS will make you far more effective in air-to-air -air combat. These switches are available for you to reach up and grab them with your mouse around the walls of your cockpit but in a swirling dogfight with an Iranian F-14 or a Cuban MiG-23, there's simply no time. If you were flying the real jet and were incredibly familiar with the cockpit, it'd be no problem to reach up and flip those switches or push those buttons, but in DCS, because we're hobbled by having to use a mouse to interact with the cockpit, it's far too slow and far too cumbersome. So we'll go off to the all controls but access commands. And the first one you're definitely going to want to have mapped is your telemeter zone scanning switch BPZ, telemeter zone scanning switch center, and telemeter zone scanning switch TEL for telemetry. Essentially, these buttons basically throw your radar into a boresight mode and a slightly wider boresight mode, with the center switch bringing your radar back to HA or RWS scan mode to allow you to go from within visual range combat back to BVR combat with a press of a button and vice versa. Another additional button you're definitely gonna wanna have mapped is your C plus M or SWR button and C plus M or SWR deselection switch. This is essentially like your weapon select switch in your FA-18 Hornet. Pressing this button automatically switches the jet over to Sidewinder or Magic 
one mode, as well as air-to-air -air cannon mode to allow you to take a snapshot at say a MiG closing in on you, or once you have a radar lock on an enemy bandit, to then switch over to using a Sidewinder to down him, rather than having to go down to the weapon selection panel and actually press the push tile to give you a Sidewinder to actually fire at the enemy. This is a really, really good way to simply defend yourself on the fly when you have a MiG sneak up on your tail or come at you for emerge from the nose. The deselection switch, of course, deselects the cannon, magic, or sidewinder mode and goes back to the regular BVR mode to use those 530Fs or go back to being able to use your air to ground weapons that you already have set up and ready to go on your weapon selection panel. So with all that in mind, guys, let's go ahead and head back to the cockpit and let's do a demonstration on using the radar to actually engage aerial targets with our 530Fs and the sidewinders mounted on our wingtip stations. Okay guys, let's go ahead and get started with a demonstration of using our Cyrano 4 radar and all the controls we just talked about to engage those aerial targets with our 530s and our Mantra Magics or Sidewinders on our wingtip stations. First thing we'll do here, of course, is we will turn Master Arm to on so that way we don't forget that as we did in the last video. And we'll turn off our external lights. Make sure that the police lights are off as well. And to select our Matra 530 missiles, we're going to select this button and this button. So this is gonna be for our right Matra 530 wing station. This is gonna be for our left or fuselage 530 station. Keep in mind guys that unfortunately the Mirage F1CE cannot carry three 530s. You either get one on the center line or two on the wings. We do not need to worry about selecting our sidewinders for left and right wing tip sidewinder stations here because of the fact that we have our fast sidewinder selection switch already mapped to our OTAS. Alrighty guys, so we are flying out here. Let's take a look at the F-10 map. We have quite a few aircraft out around us for us to use our radar and practice engaging aerial targets. One thing that's kind of a bummer about the Cyrano 4 radar and it's a limitation of when it was built and the time in which it was built is the fact that it has no integral IFF. So you have to be exceedingly careful when firing those 530Fs from a BVR type scenario because you're not going to be able to determine whether he's a good guy or whether he's a bad guy just from looking at your radar scope. But I guess the saving grace for that is the 530 missile is an incredibly short range missile. You're not going to get within the launch envelope if you're any further out than about 4 nautical miles from your target, especially in a chase situation. You may get a little bit more range out of it if you're in a perfect head-on situation with a heck of a lot of closure rate with your target. The missile is very, very slow, but it is very, very maneuverable. Those very large control surfaces that give it its maneuverability really, really slows it down, and it's quite draggy. Don't expect to get very many kills with your 530s if your target is paying attention. If they're not paying attention, you may get a sneaky kill. But for the most part, if you are flying against a human opponent, I expect them to be able to dodge these missiles pretty darn easily. But what they will do is scare your opponent into going defensive so that way you can close range and engage them with a magic one or a sidewinder. The missile is incredibly smoky and it's huge. It looks like a gigantic SAM launch in the sky, which will definitely spook your opponent and make them go defensive. So it looks like we're starting to get some echoes on our radar screen here. I believe that to be a MiG-29 off to the left hand side there. And we have a flight of F-16s just behind him. So let's see if we can lock up the MiG, but not our F-16s. Alrighty. So let's pause the simulation here and talk about what we see on our screen now that we have a target locked up in HA mode. So essentially we have them in a hard lock, an RWS hard lock here. And that's basically the only way you're gonna be able to lock targets in the Mirage F1 and then engage them with your 530s is with that hard RWS lock. So we can see here that we have the same 
scale setting for the display of our radar with the target locked, you can adjust the scale setting with the scale slider down aft of your radar stick, just like you would when you're scanning in search mode. And that will allow you to see how far away the target is a little bit easier that way. When you're using telemetry mode, which is the dogfight mode, of course, the range is automatically selected to seven nautical miles, and you're not gonna be able to lock any targets any further than seven nautical miles in telemetry mode. So that's a little difference there. This little bar off to the right hand side looks very similar to the weapon engagement zone bar that you would find in say an F-16 or an F-A-18. However, this is showing your closure rate to the target, not the distance or the weapon engagement zone of that target. What we have for our weapon engagement zone is going to pop up on the HUD and we now have some new information on the HUD than we've seen before. This little guy here the dot with the two wings is basically an interception flight director. We basically want to follow this director here in order to give us a perfect intercept vector onto that target to get into weapons engagement range with our 530s as quickly as possible. When we are in weapons engagement range, we're going to see a nice big green dot pop up in the center of our HUD up here. And when we're too close to fire at 530, that dot will turn red telling us we're no longer within safe parameters to fire the missile. Keep in mind as this is a consideration in the Mirage F1, when you're in a dogfight or you're in air-to-air -air combat, firing a missile will have the power of your engines automatically derate in order to avoid a flame out by ingestion of smoke. So you're going to definitely feel your afterburner kick off or your power pull way back and you'll feel it and hear it come way back forward again once the engine determines that it's safe to start to rev back up. So don't think that you've accidentally, you know, stalled your engine or had a compressor stall or anything of that nature. That is built into the aircraft and is a standard feature. So let's unpause. We'll kick off our autopilot here and we'll start to follow our flight director for our intercept. Now keep in mind guys that it's not perfect, but it does its best. So another thing that is pretty cool about the avionics and the Cyrano 4 radar of your Mirage F1 is like a more modern fighter, we actually have a little tan dot here superimposed on the enemy contact that we have locked up. So it, uh, it definitely gives you a lot of very good situational awareness. So it's definitely a big step up from aircraft like the MiG-21 or F-5 or even the F-4 Phantom. The early versions of the F-4 Phantom have nothing like this. And we can see the flight director is bringing us right onto the radar contact. And the radar is starting to see the target start to come off to our right hand side as he makes a left hand turn in his orbit. And to demonstrate the scale selection tool, we'll go ahead and move the scale down a little bit. And we can see we now have a scale of 35 nautical miles for our radar scope, giving us a better judge of how far away he is. And I'm sure all of you guys are screaming at the screen right now, being like, why aren't you firing the missile? Well, we just got the green dot. So let's go ahead and try it. I'm gonna close a little bit further. And Fox 1. We can hear the engines rev down. Afterburner re-engages. And splat. Nice. So against the AI, these missiles can be pretty deadly, but uh, the close range at which they need to be fired is a little bit scary at times. It makes me want to take a Sparrow or an Amram a heck of a lot more than these weapons, that's for sure. But they will be quite nice for a nice head-on shot on, say, a Cold War server or a Cold War mission, at which not everybody around you has all aspect missiles. And he's going down to the ocean, perfect. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can find some other aircraft out here so that way we can practice firing a 530 again 
then maybe using our telemetry mode and show you guys what that looks like. One thing to do to make it a lot easier to actually lock a target is make sure you're nice and stable and not turning as you're trying to lock a target because the radar is not ground stabilized in the way that uh, more modern radars are. And so you're going to have a hard time actually finding those targets if you're turning the aircraft. So it looks like they're off to the left now. And you can see the radar is certainly not perfect. It is an old piece of tech and it will confuse you pretty darn easily. All right, I can see them visually. So let's see if we can get another 530 shot off on these guys. There we go. All right, all right, there's... They're flying away from us. So in a tail chase, our range of our 530 is gonna be even less than it would be firing against that first bandit. Our closure rate indicator is showing that our closure rate is not great. If the little vertical line on our closure rate indicator gets into the black or into this part down below the break in the line, that shows that we have actually a negative closure rate and that they're flying away from us, which is not great for engaging with a 530 missile. The Israelis actually detested this missile. During the Six Day War, they fired a number of them, and not a single kill was achieved against maneuverable MiG 19s, 17s, and 21s fielded by the Egyptian and Syrian Air Forces. We can see the flight director is directing us on a nice intercept vector. Fox 1. Engine RPM goes way down as we ingest a whole lot of smoke. Boom, got him. We'll go to telemetry mode. We'll select the Sidewinder. Fox 2. Boom, got him. So even though this jet is quite old and its avionics quite anti antiquated by modern standards, you can do some pretty amazing things and you can be pretty darn effective in the air-to-air -air arena. Now, of course, all of our targets here today were not actually maneuvering and they weren't trying to kill us, they were just flying into drones in circles. But it does serve as a great demonstration for you guys of the capabilities of this platform. And it is a, such a fun jet to fly, guys. You guys are really, really going to love it when it comes out later. One thing to keep in mind is a lot of times the jet will automatically fire missiles off from one side of the jet before the other side of the jet. So you may find yourself an asymmetric loadout in air-to-air -air combat quite frequently and you just have to be exceedingly careful with how you maneuver your jet and make sure that you are nice and trimmed out all the time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative and I hope you guys are just as excited for this module coming to DCS as I am. We'll see you in the next one. Fly safe and stay healthy out there. Make sure you hit that bell icon and subscribe. <laughs> so that way my videos are actually delivered to you guys. Thanks.